Hi there, I'm Laura here from Get Organized HQ and I've literally spent the last several years researching and studying and interviewing all sorts of organized people along with being a fairly organized person myself and I've discovered 12 secrets about these people that might actually surprise you. Number one, their spaces, their organized spaces, all look very different from each other. So there's not like just one type of look that is organized. And for this, we have to go back to the definition of what it means to be organized. You've probably heard me say this before, but to be organized, you only need two things. Every item needs a home and it has to make you smile. That's it. So for some people, that's something like this behind me with beautiful labels. For some people, that's like rainbow and color coding. But for other people, that's literally just sticking things on a shelf, but you know where they are. So there is a huge range of spaces that are truly organized that look different. And they don't all look like something you might see in a magazine or on Instagram or Pinterest. That is not required for organization. All right, so we talked about how all the organized spaces can look very different from each other, but the people themselves who are organized are also very different from each other. All different stages of life and ages and personality types, all of that. There is not like one type of person who is organized. Literally anyone with any personality at any age at any stage can be organized. Number three is one that I think will surprise a lot of you, but a lot of organized people didn't start out that way. They were not always organized. So it is totally something that can be learned. Many people for the first several years of their life weren't organized at all. I have known of a lot of people who actually were pretty disorganized, things were a mess, it was causing them a lot of stress, and that was actually the catalyst for them to learn how to get organized. So I wanna give you encouragement, if you're sitting there right now and you feel like, oh, I'm not very organized, I wish I weren't, there is totally hope for you. Absolutely anybody can get organized. It is actually a learned skill, like absolutely no one is born just totally knowing how to be organized. It is something that you can learn and you can start to implement the organized habits gradually over time and you can become someone who is organized. Now, lots of organized people don't actually love organizing. So what they love is the results and what an organized life allows them to do. So they're not stressed, they know where everything is, but they may not be like me who wants to spend her free time roaming the aisles of the container store and making pretty labels and color coding things. There's a lot of organized people who don't think that's fun at all. And remember what I said at the beginning, there is no certain way that something has to look to be organized. So to be organized, you, you absolutely do not have to love the process of organizing. One of the things that's pretty popular these days is minimalism. And I think minimalism is great. And I know lots of amazing minimalists, but a lot of really organized people are not actually minimalists. And that is not a requirement for being organized. I myself, don't really consider myself a minimalist. I have like a big house and quite a bit of things. I don't really uh, like the idea of going and living in a tiny house with like only two pots or something like that. That just doesn't really interest me. So you don't have to be a total minimalist to be organized. Now it is important not to have too much clutter, but there's a difference between not having unnecessary clutter and trying to live with as few things as possible. So minimalism, is optional. So if any of these things were most true of me, it is this one. Organized people do not always have a tidy home. So I, like I said, prime example, if you dropped over on like a random Tuesday afternoon, I would say about 20% of the time you'd, you'd be kind of like, ooh, it's really messy. <laughs> like she didn't even put away the dinner dishes from last night and there's like stuff all over the couches. About you know, the other, like say 50 to 60% of the time, it would be like fine. Like it wouldn't be perfect. There'd be a couple dishes there, but you know, it would just look decent. And then like about 20% of the time, it would look completely put away and you'd be like, oh wow, this house is spotless. But I want to emphasize that by no means is my house always tidy and tidying and organizing are two different things. So I love organizing. Give me a closet, give me all the bins. Let me separate it all out and put the labels on it and color code it. And I'm in my happy place and my closets do stay that way. But when it comes to the day-to-day -day habits of like, okay, I'm gonna consistently put items away. 
I'm going to, when we, as soon as we finish dinner, put all the dinner dishes away and get the dishes washed, those kind of things. That is not my skill set. And over the years, as my chronic illness has gotten worse, that has been the thing that's gone by the wayside even more. So you don't have to always have a tidy house to be organized. And it's just not a requirement. Some organized people do and some don't. And here's the thing about being organized and not being like I am great at consistently tidying up. It's never more than five or 10 minutes away from being pretty tidy because while I'm not good at putting it all away, everything has a clear defined space. We know where it goes. So when it is time to clean up, I'm not wasting all this mental energy on like, where does this go? It doesn't even have a place. So it's always pretty close and to being clean and pretty easy to clean up. Now, number seven kind of goes along with the last one, but organized people are not always consistent. I think we kind of get this idea that like everyone else who's organized is like 100% consistent and they never have a messy space and every single day they do the same things on the same routine. Um, that's not me personally at all. <laughs> um, I'm not like super regimented and super routine and super consistent. I'm kind of like, I kind of go, um, I'm kind of like a more all at once person. So I'll go in like fits and spurts. So I'll be like, all right, time to organize all the things. And I'll just like go for a couple of weeks and get all excited about organizing. And then I'll go a few months and not really, you know, mess with organizing much. And so you don't necessarily have to be consistent in order to be organized. Now, consistency is good and I would encourage that in some things, but don't think that you just, it's going to be that like, oh, you have to be a person who follows like this checklist of your day every single day. Okay. So we often think that these organized people like remember everything. They don't forget anything. That's not true. I've actually talked to a lot of people where I feel like the opposite is true. They have become organized because they are actually forgetful. So they have to set up systems in place to help them remember. Otherwise they would forget. So like an excellent memory is not a prerequisite and things like uh, having calendar systems, having a checklist or some kind of system for that, setting up reminder systems in your phone are what a lot of organized people rely on to keep them together. It might be logical to think that these organized people spend a ton of time organizing, but the truth is they don't. They spend way more time on maintaining their spaces than they do setting up the organization in the first place. That is just the name of the game. Personally, I know my family and I, we spend more time just keeping up with it and putting things away than, than I did setting up the system in the first place. Now, there are things you can do when you're setting up the system to make maintenance easier. And really, I think you should always organize with that in mind. Like, how am I going to make it easier for us to put these things away? So like, instead of having to go somewhere to like hang up a backpack and put it away, put a hook right there when people come in, you can make it easier, but the bulk of time is spent in maintenance. That's just how it is. Unless you basically live in a museum where you don't actually use things, in which case maybe you do spend more time organizing. We often imagine that People who have everything together are super energetic all the time, don't have a lazy bone in their body, but I don't think that's true at all. I will tell you, I am personally often lazy and actually being organized works with laziness because it actually makes life easier. So I do things for myself to make my life easier so that I don't have to be on and operating at 100% energy all the time. And I know that for myself, that isn't something like I, I just don't, um, for the past seven years, as I've had a lot of illness that I've dealt with, um, I've never, I don't operate, you know, at full energy all the time. So all my organizing systems are there to help make my life easier and cause me less stress. So like when I always put my keys in the same place, there's never that scramble of where are the keys? Oh my goodness, now we have to go for a mad dash. When we always put our shoes in the same place, then we know this is where they are. So actually the systems that you set up as an organized person will make it to where you don't have to operate at max capacity all the time. So I would say one of the biggest myths that we have about organized people is that they are like super women who do this all on their own. And many of them are super women, but it doesn't mean that they do it all on their own. And I know for myself, when I have looked on social media, especially when I'm just seeing someone's highlight reel and I'm like, oh, 
oh my goodness, how on earth do they manage to like run this business with like all these different facets and they're, I'm constantly seeing them on Instagram and then they have 12 kids and they homeschool them and they're in all these different activities. Oh, and then their house is always beautiful and they're moving and like, how do they do it? They do it with often a lot, a lot of help. If you, if, if, you know, if you ask them, many of them would say, well, I had, you know, maybe full-time nanny, full-time house manager, house cleaners, people who help me in the business, all these kinds of things. So a lot of us have a lot of help. And even those who don't have as much, it's still a group effort. So especially getting help from the people who live in your household is one of the things that I think most people who are organized have. So you can't really do it alone. Like I can't clean up messes as fast as myself and the other three people in my household make them. Like it's just not possible. So some of the responsibility needs to go to them. And so for example, for me, I'm not the only one putting things away. I'm not the only one washing dishes. In fact, I do, I think, less of it than certainly my, my husband does. Um, we're still working on getting our children um, more on board with consistently uh, helping with the household activities and just things needed to run the household. But it is not a solo effort. And so I think that just realizing that a lot of us do it with a lot of help. And not only that, but for myself personally, a lot of these organized ideas and systems, I didn't even come up with it on my own. I was inspired by somebody else. Like I literally got these bins behind me with the labels because I was following someone on social media who did it. And I was like, oh, I want to do that too. And then I watched tutorials on how to use my label maker and things like that. So I got a lot of inspiration and advice from other people, which is one of the things that I love about the community that we've created here is I feel like we're all in it to help each other. And we're constantly giving each other tips and advice. Um, you can read, there's books, there's podcasts, there's YouTube channels like this one, there's blogs, there's all the things. So you don't have to go it alone, even if you feel like the people around you aren't as supportive as you would like. So one of the things that I have been asked as an online organizing expert is, do you have any junk spaces like a Monica closet? And Many organized people actually do have these spaces that are a total mess. So it doesn't mean that every single part of your house is organized. And I really think many of us have kind of like a catch-all area or at least a place that tends to get, get there at certain times because in order to keep the whole entire space organized, if you have one space where you can throw the things that you don't know what to do with, it really does help keep the rest of the things in order. For me, I have an entire video I'll link below on the one space that I gave up organizing years ago. It's just never going to be organized and I'm okay with that. So I'll link to that video below. I also have little spaces from time to time. Um, I have a storage room. I pointed behind me because it's literally behind me um, that for a long time was unorganized until we kind of straightened it up. But even now I know it has a lot of things I need to go through. Um, our garage right now has the stuff I've just kind of thrown in there um, in like an extra space in there. So at various times, I definitely have those spaces that are not as organized as what you see here behind me. And I'm okay with that. That's just part of life. And it's, you know, if you're organizing a space that you're actively living in and using and the people are changing, like our needs are changing, what we do is changing, then it's going to be the type of thing that you have to maintain and there's always going to be a space or two that does get a little bit less organized and that I think that's just part of it and that's okay. Now if you enjoyed this I think you'll love hearing my seven habits of disorganized people and I'm going to tell you it's not what you think so go ahead and it should be linked here go ahead and watch that video next.